Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. On this episode of NSFW Show, we go over a brand new book, The Diamond Club, that you're writing. What? You mean you're like, I'm not writing it? Yeah, you are. And you will be once you listen to this episode. Also, we reclaim the good name of bat salts after they're vindicated by a medical examiner. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW Show. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 133, recorded on June 27th, 2012. Tub treats. We'll just, uh, let's just settle down here. Oh, uh, let's just take this one step at a time. I, I like you very much. Uh, I really do. And, uh, very nervous about this whole thing. And here comes Mr. Meatloaf. the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the weather, and the show that is naughty stories for women and nominally safe for work. I'm Brian Rushwood, joined in studio by Justin Robert Young, because this is definitely a shot for the two of us sitting in the same place at the same time. How are you doing, Justin? They call me Mr. Meatloaf. <laughs> oh, my good God. That was hard. No, very rarely does the opening video throw me off, but that video... <laughs> I was what like, I was, I, mean, I feel like I was, I was touched by that video in a way I didn't want to be touched. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that one's like a, like a, I don't know, only has 500,000 views. Just look for ALF episode two, Mr. Meatloaf. That was, and that's like four years old. That thing is sat dormant forever. That's some good, uh, that's some good cuts. Wait, right hold there. on, wait. So wait, how much, because it seems like too much of that is real for it to be like, like uh, co totally out of context. Like there's a point where the dad from Alf gets naked in front of Alf, right? <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know that uh, it, it could be. We need like to maybe... deconstruct this. Like we need we need an autopsy on how this came together. Alien autopsy. <laughs> They're like, yes, we definitely have DNA from Alf's dad or whatever. Exactly. Whatever, whatever his Because we because we swabbed his innards. <laughs> That's because he didn't have uh, Iron uh, Socks plating. <laughs> well, you mentioned it, <laughs> right. so now we have to tell the story. Okay, we'll tell that. That'll be, that's a tease for the third segment of the show. But first, uh, let me tell you guys that this is another special edition episode. We apologize that we've been all over the map as far as our schedule. I've been on the road. Justin's getting his sea legs underneath him, by which I mean having sex with a mermaid uh, with uh, the Go <laughs> game. And now... <laughs> Get your sea leg uh, underneath me. That's what I like to do. Whenever I have sex with a mermaid, I like to coax her out of the water with a, with some chum and then uh, let her know, like, I, I like to sweet talk her by saying, hey there, little missy, why don't you get your sea leg underneath my Ford Pinto seat? And then we bang, sea style, which is uh, while I apologize and throw a mist of water on her face with a squeeze thing. And she just ejects a bunch of eggs and leaves. She just throws a bunch of eggs all over the passenger seat of my Ford Pinto and then flops awkwardly back into the bay. All right, so um, as you can tell, we don't have a guest on this episode of NSFW. <laughs> And perhaps it's because we've the ruined best. the show for guests lately. Lately, like me and Brian have had so much of a fun time just horsing off with each other that we just normally have a guest and they just sit there and they're like, "Yes, I'm really good at things. Like I have great talents. I do 
amazing work that gets to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, like Rob Kreckle and Hack5 Darren and, and all the amazing people that's been on the show. And instead, me and Brian are way more interested in stories like I just told, where I banged a mermaid and then, as Brian suggested, she sprayed eggs all over my car. Well, I'll tell you, maybe, I, I almost wonder if we shouldn't have like a three hour format and just have a guest on for, we can have a really good one third of a show with a guest, but it's like, the the, ch the problem is all the fans wants us, wants us to start riffing and going crazy, but that's not conducive to a guest. By the way, next week, go ahead and tease this. Can we tease it in advance? I don't know what you're going to say, so I say yes. Uh, next week, Ernest Klein joining oh, us. Oh, hell yeah, really? Uh, Tuesday, yeah, two things. First of all, we are back in studio. Oh, I just looked up and Patrick Delahanty's face just exploded with joygasms. Uh, he, uh, uh, he's joining us on the 3rd, which I believe is a Tuesday. And um, uh, we are back in studio, back to our regular thing. And by the way, somebody showed me where the Easter egg is in the book, and it was magical. It's brilliant. The Easter egg is so much... It's so clever, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give anything. I'm not gonna say anything. That was the we first. Were, the first one. The, the well, the the first one. Once you get in the groove, it's obvious that all you have to do, you have to find the Easter egg. It takes you to a place. Okay, oh, and and, and, and re re real quick to reset for people that might have not heard previous episodes, uh, Ernest Klein. What the hell's happening behind me? There's people. There's oh. hooligans outside. That are shining lights. In the window. Anyway, so uh, they were yelling, Brian. I'm sorry. All right, so Ernest Klein wrote the fantastic book, Ready Player One. The plot of the book is that there is somebody who uh, has to fulfill the crazy will of a dead genius by uh, going through all these, by finding these Easter eggs. And now Ernest Klein, because as art imitates life, or life imitates art, uh, he has set up his own crazy Easter egg situation. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, man, it's obvious that some heavy-duty thought went into this because the Easter eggs were no lie sitting in front of everyone since the release of the hardcore, hardcover edition. Nobody has found it. And I'm, again, I don't want to tease it. Maybe maybe we'll talk with Ernest to get a little teasing out of it. But uh, I know that 500 people found the original Easter egg, including some of the fine members of, of Chat Realm, and they've already completed the first gate and they're waiting for the second gate to unlock at the beginning of July, which will be perfect because we'll have Ernest on the show. And then, of course, it's going to be a fever pitch getting ready for the third gate well, to open on the first August. I mean, August. like, if, if, if life is really imitating art, in the book, when the gates were open, they became national news. And we well, basically, Brian, are the national news. Well, you know what? I like to think we're bigger than the national news. I think there's... there's uh, I, what's funny is all that news anchors I can think of are from 10 to 20 years ago. I can't name a like single who? news anchor. Who are you now. going to name as a modern news anchor? I was going to say Tom Brokaw first, and then I was like, yeah, I've been on the air for a long time. And I was like, and then I was going to say um, uh, Bernie, what's his name Madoff. from CNN? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah Bernie Madoff. Bernie Williams, uh, Yankees uh, <laughs> Bernard center fielder. Shaw was who I was thinking of. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. Uh, but Man, then, whatever yeah, happened so to Bernard Shaw? Bernard Shaw, for a while, had the market cornered on really cool black guys. He did? I Bernard thought that, Shaw? He was a boss. Like, like he was going to tell like, you what was going on. I thought, like, Rick James had the corner market on awesome black guys. Oh, you want to you, you, you go black on black? You want to have a black no, off? No, I don't want to. Stop this black on black violence. <laughs> it's more like black on black eye. Uh, all right, so here's the important thing. Next week... Uh... We're going to be debating... Uh, we're going to go through our the next round of our Black People's Tournament, uh, and the winner of Rick James versus Bernard Shaw is going to take on Barack Obama versus Shaquille O'Neal. Tune in! <laughs> Don't miss it. But look, here's the important thing. None of this matters because we have a news item. You ready? Yes! Okay. Uh, go ahead, Brian. You have it pulled ready. up? I'm going to... I'm going to read you a little story. This is some breaking news. 11.08 p.m., released just an hour ago, June 27th, 2012, medical examiner, Causeway Cannibal, not high on bath salts. Well, and obviously, listen, there were a lot of people, including uh, uh, us on weirdthings.com. We talked about it on the podcast a little bit, that uh, this the bath salts thing 
has been a meme. You know, people have talked a lot about how the bath salts are, are kind of the gateway drug to zombiedom uh, and, and cannibalism. <laughs> Because, you know, it's socially acceptable to, you know, eat other's faces. And, you know, or at least do the bath salts that lead to the, the face eating. Well, so, yeah, I right, mean, I'm not saying people were, like, cool about it. It wasn't like it wasn't like Roger Sterling in the, last, in the latest episode of Mad Men where he's just, like, doing acid all the time. Like, it was just, it was, it was. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Spoilers, bro. Oh, spoiler, what, spoiler alert. alert. Sorry. Right. Roger yeah. Sterling does acid at some point during Mad Men. Uh, all right. Roger Serling does bath salts and eats Peggy's face. Congratulations. <laughs> but no, but that's, see, Brian, what I did right there, that was something that's unfair to bath salts. I, I made a joke that doing bath salts leads you to eat people's faces, and as has turned out, we are nothing but slaves to you, science on this show. That's not right, true. Justin, it yeah. sounds like trying to exonerate bath salts. It's trying. To, it sounds like you're trying to say that bath salts are a okay, and it's unfair the reputation they have. I mean, I'm not saying they're a okay. I'm just saying that like maybe they've gotten a bad rap. And you want to know, Brian? Uh, I I'm sorry. I I've actually I've been talking a lot to one of an old friend of this show, somebody who actually came on a while ago, and uh, he's actually been hired by by the bath salt lobby. Uh, because, you know, listen, they've gotten a lot of bad press. They need a disaster PR situation. Uh, and he actually, all right, this is weird, because I, I didn't, like, I don't want to book a guest without telling you, but, but I told yeah, him just to hang out. unorthodox. I wasn't expecting you to bring up this particular, this particular story. So, uh, Chad, do we, have, do we have his camera ready? Hold on, uh, wait, wait, wait. So that's why you hired this, or that's why you, you booked this guest is because you didn't expect me to bring this up? No, or, or I just, I, he happened to be walking down the street in Petaluma and we had a conversation and uh, he brought up that he had just gotten a new job. He, he's, uh, but l let's just introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, the brand new legal counsel for a consortium of businesses collectively known as Big Bath Salt. Uh, he's everybody's <laughs> favorite attorney, I Iris Sockman. I... Hi, hello, how you doing? It's me, Iris Sackman. I've been hired by uh, a collection of companies. And by the way, Brian, you're looking great. You're looking fantastic. You're doing great. This is a fantastic episode so far. You boys are so funny. I, I, can't, I can't imagine you guys. So, so many laughs. So many laughs. But you know, I don't know what's not funny. The malignment of the good industry of bath salts. Oh, yeah, I, Ira, <clears throat> uh, listen, it sounds like you guys are on. I understand that, that a bunch of people were quick to judge the bath salt industry and put the blame for face eating at them. But this story, listen to this story. Let me go through this, Ira. Miami, CBS Miami. Rudy City Eugene, Lights, which, by the way, Miami. <laughs> the Causeway cannibal who ate the face off of a homeless man he attacked along the uh, uh, actually, actually Brian Brian listen I, I don't I don't want to be I don't want to be a stickler here and listen it, 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 it's your show and you're doing great at it but uh do me a favor it, technically we don't like to call him the Causeway cannibal we like to call him the highway hungry man and also <laughs> um, okay it, it's also uh he the, the, he was not technically homeless the man whose face he he, he ate. He was just a, uh, a, a, a sad sack wanderer fellow. So can you just do me a favor, refer to him as sad sack wanderer fellow. Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna read the story as written. Do me a favor, a Brian, just a very sad, real sack, problem sad sack wanderer fellow, pretend I'm not here. No. Okay, listen, was, <clears throat> uh, he attacked along the MacArthur Causeway was apparently not high on bath salts or any other exotic street drug at the time of the attack, according to a report released by the Miami-Dade Medical Examiner, listen to this. This leaves law enforcement officials wondering what drove Eugene to strip off his clothes, attack a homeless man, Ronald Popo, uh, chew off pieces of flesh from Popo's face. Speculation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, by, by the way, by the way, uh, Brian, do me a favor. Can you please read the name back of the man who's, uh, and, and I like to call, and maybe it's just the way I was raised, his face was noshed. He had a little nosh on his face. Mm -hmm. Rampage on Popo's face. P-O-P-P-O -P -P -O apostrophe S. No, I mean, uh, I'm just getting hungry listening to that. That's just, I okay. mean, like, how can you not? That, if somebody said, uh, we have an extra helping of Popo here, you'd be like, okay, sure, I would like to eat it. <laughs> okay, so here's the important thing. 
the must the much anticipated toxicology report released by Miami Dade. Medical anticipated Exam by me, I know, because there was a lot of false information going around about uh, my client, the big bat salts. Medical examiner Dr. Bruce Heima found marijuana in Eugene's system, something CBS 4 News had previously reported, but no evidence of any other street drugs. This guy was only on the dope. This guy single-handedly has set back marijuana legalization by 100 years, which ironically takes it all the way back to when it was legal. No more pot. No more pot. <laughs> Bad salt for all. Bad. I mean, that's what they're saying, Brian. Listen, I'm just like, I'm just uh, quoting. There were people outside that were shining lights. Uh, I, it, it distracted Justin like he was a frightened cat about 10 minutes ago. But really, it was it was a protest in support of, of bath salts now that they've been exonerated. No evidence of any other street drugs, alcohol, or prescription drugs, or any adulterants found in street drugs. The report says that includes cocaine, LSD, amphetamines, ecstasy, meth, and others. Uh, PCP, angel dust, heroin, oxycodone, Xanax, synthetic marijuana, and many other similar compounds. Uh, uh, do me a favor, Brian. Can you go ahead and apologize to bath salts? I, why would I apologize? I didn't, I mean, I... There's, there's I, been a lot I've, I've heard of you and Justin. And, and, and listen, you guys do a great show. You do a fantastic... Listen, it, it really is an amazing show. I show my kids your show, and they laugh, and they laugh. It, it's really... It's amazing. But... I, I just... You, you, I, I, you made a lot of jokes. A lot of jokes at bath salts expense. It, 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 it is, it's a silly... And by the way, uh, do me a favor. Uh, we, we're, we're in the middle of a rebranding. We cannot call it... Uh, do me a favor. You can't call it bath salts anymore. Can you please refer to them only as tub treats? Uh, pretend, pretend, <laughs> pretend I'm not here. Uh, listen, it sounds dangerously like you want me to come out in pub in a public forum in support of the abuse of some kind of synthetic drug sold over the counter as quote unquote bath salts. Is that, is that really what you want me to do? Tub treats. I, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do. It. I, I would sooner come out in public in support of marijuana legalization than to than to say. I mean, granted. Oh boy, that would be a shock from you, Brian. Really, you'd support <laughs> marijuana legalization? What? Because I'm a libertarian, asshole. <laughs> so what is this? Oh, with the name calling. I'm sorry, Brian. Listen, I, I didn't mean. I didn't mean. Sorry, I might have got a little cross. I, I'm sorry. You want to know what? I, I'll be honest right now. I'm high on a few tub treats. Just to show that they're, that they're, that they're totally safe. What? I, um, uh, all right, so look, what is the bath salt? I, I, think, I think everybody watching right now should get tub treats trending on Twitter. I feel like there, there, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot of damage done on the Internet, and the Internet should make it right by uh, letting everybody know that, that tub treats are safe for the look, family. I, hey, Brian, I, what have I sent you and your daughters a nice big case of tub treats? I, I don't care if you call them bath salts, tub treats, or shower sugars. I don't think it's a good idea for anyone to be smoking or take... How do they, how do they take the bath salts? Any way they like. Whatever's clever. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is a very unusual place for Ira to be. For someone as risk-adverse as Ira Sockman to be in, like willfully advocating the misuse of, of, a, of, of a street, uh, a gray market substance like that. Uh, again, again, Bryce, see, listen, uh, and, and can I just say you're doing a great job. This is, this is the best. <laughs> I've been watching the show for over 15 years. This is the best you've ever been. You're, uh, you, you, you're at the top of your game. You've never been better. Let me just say that I would like, I, I, I only took this job because I knew I could believe in it. I, I believe in tub treats. I, I believe that they are as American as apple pie. And if you ate an apple pie full of tub treats, you'd do a backflip <laughs> for America. Look, uh, uh, all right. So you, do you feel, a question, Ira, do you feel like on behalf of the bath salts industry that this, that this toxicology report completely exonerates your so-called tub treats? Uh, yeah, yeah uh, of course, absolutely. Uh, not only has this particular toxicology report completely exonerated this fantastic mom and pop industry that really proves the backbone of America is strong, but also it proves that Mr. Popo's face 
was just absolutely too delicious to refuse. <laughs> okay, all right. Pretend that's I'm enough. not here. I, I, you're out. You're off. You're off. Get out of here, Ira. He's got, all right, that's Ira. Too. Thank you very much for showing up. <laughs> Thank you so much. He's gone now. <laughs> um. Wow. That's uh. That's we weren't expecting a... that. I just want to let you, everybody know. Completely random. We had no idea that Ira was going to show up. You know what? That is 50%, 100% true. <laughs> that, that at least one of us had no idea that Ira was going to show up and that this was going to be the bit we And missed. who said we didn't have guests, Brian? I, you know, you're right. Uh, you, now I'm a liar, and apparently tub treats are the new in thing to do. I, what, uh, I'm so sorry that I... I like shower so sugars, good. though, too. Shower sugars was good. Uh, look, uh, dude... Seriously, let's talk. Let's let's be real for a second. Like that seems like like marijuana has a very good question mark reputation for being like a, a, a you know stoners don't do anything except for sit and eat potato chips, but uh, in this case, potato chips are a homeless man's face. Uh, number one, like this only had a drug angle because no one had heard of bath salts before, and there was like an exotic thing that we could assign an action to. Uh, you know, if, it was just, it was something people didn't know. So it could have been like flibbity flu. And we'd be like, you know what flibbity flu does? It makes you eat a mother ever's face. Like, it just didn't <laughs> matter. Flippity like, flu it was, hype man. It was X. Yeah, flibbity flu hype man. I'm going to do, I'm going to do all the characters tonight. I'm going to do <laughs> Steve McTiller tutors coming up in the third act. I love flibbity flu. <laughs> I love bad salt. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Jigglestocks, high on the bath salt right now. <laughs> what are you eating, Fat Rick? <laughs> oh, I'm eating bath salt. I can't get any more. I mean, I'll tell you what. I support Mitt Romney and tough treats. <laughs> uh, all right, Follow the tub treats, gumshoes. Uh, <laughs> hey, tub treats. All right, that is a... For, for the Justice he's League like, of he's characters. Like, he's got like character Tourette's, where it's like you can't help it. You're trying to move forward, but then you just hey, got, mister, oh, you got hey, any tub treats? <laughs> hey, mister. All right. Um, no, I mean, it was just because we didn't know about it. And so I we could define it. I think it's unfair that we have besmirched bath salts and tub treats for so long. How come we haven't had, had a face-off between Ira Sockman and the Southern Lawyer? Maybe one day, when we think f more than four seconds ahead for any bit we do. <laughs> uh, but you're, you're not surprised about this? You do, you, do you think you're going to see a big backpedaling from the media? Or no. just they're like, eh. Well, it's done. I mean, the, the story's done. Like, like, the thing about toxicology reports, and this is actually from working as, as a reporter, like, they're the worst things ever. Because they're, A, they're newsworthy enough that you have... In a disease that's... They're worse than polio. Everyone knows it. Toxicology reports are the worst things ever. No, I mean, just, just in terms of trying to, like, a story... Because you want a story that builds, right? And more and more and more and more and more people are interested in it. And so unless you have a toxicology report that, like, is the story... Like, was he drunk when he killed his wife? Wait right. for the toxicology report. Three weeks is usually about... Or, it's or like, like the Michael Jackson thing. Uh, the... the What is the... Whatever the thing was that he yeah put yeah in that eventually there. led to the doctor getting convicted or whatever because he was basically injecting like a, 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 a an elephant's worth of uh, whatever into Michael Jackson like then it's an issue but like for something like this we don't really care about what he was on we don't we care about the fact that he ate a dude's face if it was like like oh he ate fifty blaze baked potato chips and then he ate Popo's face. Because once you popo, you can't stop. <laughs> you can't o. stop eating popo. Yeah. Um, then that, that would have been it. That would have been hashtag once you popo. LOL. This dude got his face eaten. Because that's basically what it was before. And, and even remember before when it first broke, it was cocaine, and we were just like, oh, dude was high on cocaine. And then you're in a bath salt, which is even better. Okay, because we don't even but, know what cocaine is. But this dude was high on dope. Have you ever heard of any story like this about a guy that was just only on marijuana? Yes. And decided no, like, he's crazy. The, 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 the long and the short of it is this dude was 10 penny crazy. He was absolute nothing, three alarm, 
the pouring right. putting his, his his pants on his head crazy. Let's let's set up let's set up the over under because this is a pot rare to hey. like take it down. He was at he was gonna eat his arm first and then he smoked right. weed and he's like I don't know maybe the face, whatever. Bro. All right, so here's here's the thing. This is a rare opportunity where we're catching this right as it breaks. How long? What's the over under in hours till at least one headline has some variation of talk about the munchies in the in the headline in it's the next twenty four hours? It's already happened. It's already happened. You think so? The answer is uh, to how long did the story break? Like an hour ago. Fifty five minutes ago, somebody made that. Happen. <laughs> the moment it already. All right. I mean, I'm sure the chat room will no, find I think, it. No, I think I think the the dude who did the toxicology oh, report wait, tweeted nope. it. Another Brian in the chat room already has it on Fark.com. You're right. It was 55 minutes old already. That's amazing. That's how good. That's how good. I have my finger on the pulse. You're good. You're good, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, so what else? What, what else we got to talk about, sir? Here we go. 55 minutes. We're zooming in right now. Well, um. The rest of the episode, uh, I think we wanted to focus on because we got a project, Bry. Like, like this is not this is not, normally. All right, here, can we have a confession? On this show, we have a problem of ADD, where we'll start really? something. Really? We'll start you don't something. Say. We'll ask everybody to be like, listen, quit your job, divorce your wife, and move into this compound because me and Brian have an idea. And then, like the next week, it'll be like. Anyway, so you have any ideas lately? I feel like we haven't even like, thought <laughs> yeah. of anything. I saw Prometheus. You want to talk about Prometheus, maybe? I don't know. Exactly. I'm smoking bath salts. But You're this is not apparently. one of those ideas. Uh, if you have if you've not watched last week's episode, I suggest you watch last, last week's episode because it will inform you going forward, like, our big project. Because this is going to be a big thing. Uh, yeah. We're writing an erotic away. fiction novel. And by we, <laughs> I mean you, the viewer. Although me and Brian Correct. are going to write chapters. Yes, well, uh, allegedly, that's the plan. But here, here's the thing. So, oh, wait, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're writing a chapter, right? Say yes. Uh, well, but here's the thing. If I do, you won't know which one it's going to be. Yes. Because I'm going to submit it anonymously because I'm going to have the dirtiest chapter of all. Or will I? Yeah, okay. Well, it's all going to be anonymous. Well, but that's just it. That's the first thing we got to. This is a little segment that we like to call "Damn It Chat Room," uh, <laughs> where we need to. We I need to make like, clear, like, like, some... but like to say the segment name correctly, the the damn it has to be high. Like, you can't be like "Damn it." It's got to be "Damn it." <laughs> damn it, chat room. Damn it. Damn it. Like, it's, chat not, room. it's not harsh. Like, it's not like like you're about to beat your wife. Like, damn it. Like that's like a beat your wife, damn it, right? <laughs> we don't want to make we don't want to make chat realm like <laughs> we don't want to see them cringe or nothing. No, We're no, just no, no. Like... That's like that's like scare the dog, damn it. Like, damn it. It's not like that. It's like, damn it, damn it, chat realm. So there were a few things that we said that we we laid out parameters, right? That's what's great about chat realm is we set out a a, a set of rules and a structure, a scaffolding for them to work on. And then they create the most beautiful, poetic, awesome horse apples that we've ever seen in our entire lives. Sometimes, though, we very clearly sketch out the scaffolding and, and they just sweep it aside and be like, whatevs, I do what I want. And then they draw, draw something over well, here. Also, this there was a reason why we set up one rule, very yep. underlined, bolded. And it was because we knew this is a natural weakness for <laughs> chat realm. Yes, exactly. We said in no uncertain terms that when you write, and by the way, if you want to write a chapter for the erotic fiction book, all you have to do is go to bit.ly slash the Diamond Club book, and that's it. And then you just jump in, and the, the only thing is the chapter has to start with our main character, Brianna Young, entering the Diamond Club. It has to have her having a lot of sex with one of with any number of characters. It's got to be super saucy and lots of sex and not well written thing, the the rule no. is not well written if you if right, you write right. well don't write well if you don't write but, well do what you do 
but do be explicit and do describe a lot of extraordinarily explicit, highly sexual action involving things that would make uh, people blush if they were to read them in public. But the one thing you must not do, Justin, is what? Just fill the entire story with an excuse to reference characters and things from the show. Like, that's like the one, like, you can be clever. Like, if you said that no. he, ran, no. he ran into... No clever. No he, clever. We are... All the clever that will go into this book has already been decided and was decided in the last episode. There's no need for more clever. You don't need to have someone mention her best friend, Ira, and how, well, that's a really neat sock, man. There, none of that. <laughs> we don't need any of that. We don't need creepy Santa reference okay, all right. times in the goddamn book the way it is right now. <laughs> creepy Santa's in there 13 times, Justin. No. No. Crazy Face says her best friend, Glape. <laughs> no, none of that. That's what we don't want. I don't want to hear how about like, oh man, he's such a troll, but he's okay, I guess, Max. There's no, we don't need that. We need hot girl on girl on guy on girl's ex-boyfriend with a she-male on top. That's what we need. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the problem. And, like, by the way, the way that I found this out is Brian, uh, I talked to Brian, he's like, we need to talk about the erotic fiction book. And I'm like, oh, what happened? <laughs> How many chapters is uh, Creepy Santa in? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, well, it's mentioned 13 times in the book and, and by different authors. And, they're, and, and clever stuff like, hey, man, let's do the Creepy Santa and they're like, what's the creepy Santa? And then some <laughs> hilarious explanation. Exactly. No. No. It's where you bang and I sit in the corner of the room and light myself up while I jay up. <laughs> yes, and stare at you awkwardly. What are you here? Keep feeding me some of the examples of all the inside sauce that people keep doing. And I understand it's going to be awkward. And the problem is, is everyone's putting their name at the top of the chapter. And I understand, like, at that point, you're showboating for the other chat realmers who are going to be checking out the doc. And I understand that. Resist that temptation. In fact, if you truly want to make this a success, put by anonymous and then quietly quietly know that that's you. And then, and then that way it can be about the banging and not about the showboating for the other chat realm. By the way, uh, to, in, in reverence to what I described as the creepy Santa, large geek in the chat room says, that has a name? <laughs> it does now. It's called the Creepy Santa. Apparently, Large Geek had been doing it. He was bringing it large style, lighting himself up, and J.O. rolling the dice. There you go. Uh, uh, all right, sure so, that... so, so where are we at? I feel like we've got a lot of words here. We're doing okay, right? Uh, okay, hold on. Laserdiscs is mentioned six times in the book so far. Laserdiscs does not need to mention, don't even mention it even once. There's no, there's nothing hot or sexy about Laserdiscs. But why do they so love Laserdiscs? Brian, why do they love Laserdiscs? Then they can think about it privately because that's not what the reader cares about. I want this thing to sell books, man. <laughs> it's got to be. I had a chat there in the Diamond Club book. Justin, uh, it was all about laser discs. I tried to write about laser discs, right? But I couldn't. I had to write about laser discs. Justin, four times somebody mentions the word smoky, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not in a hot, saucy, sexy, smoky kind of way. I'm pretty sure it's the old John Smoky Bride. <laughs> I was like, for a second, I got lost in our own forest of references, and I'm like, Smokey, that sounds fun. What, 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 Smokey? What, what are <laughs> no, people are making like old John Smokies. I don't want to see any Fapper the Dolphins in there. <laughs> it's got to be. All the inside references that we need are already in there. It's just got to be hot, sexy a action. And here's the thing I know, like, for example, Patrick Delahanty, he wrote his whole setup. And now it got to the part where he needs to write the sexy. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I feel dirty. That's because your name is on it. You should never put your name on that chapter. Even if my name's on there, I hate myself. He says he hates himself okay, for having all right, written all right. this. So can we, can we lower 
the cloak of anonymity on on the Diamond Club? Can we make it the new? If you want to write in the Diamond Club erotic fiction book, then you're anonymous. And if you see somebody else's name, change it to anonymous. Yeah, you know what? There are no names in there. Nobody, you you can know privately what hot saucy, because I think that's what's keeping anyone from writing any of the sexy sauce that's going to make this thing a bestseller. Actually, it's it's the chat realm cheating that's going to make it a bestseller. But but keep it <laughs> a bestseller. It's gotta it's gotta be. Uh, I think it should it should all be anonymous because I'm tired of don't put the jokes in there. Okay, I, I feel like do we have do we have uh, your 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 studio audience looking up more references and oh yeah no they they're going to all right here we go uh, oh yeah that's right there's an entire chapter where the two primary characters who are making love have the names in all caps Brian and Justin <laughs> and all caps Brian leaned forward and kissed Justin right on the lips snaking <laughs> tongue around. Then Justin pulled off Brian, Brian's pants. <laughs> well, that's not even like a joke, though. Like, that happened. That was real. I'd like to remind you that Bonnie watches this show. <laughs> and Ben Franklin said that. Of course, that's hot. Bonnie. She was creepy standing in the corner. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else is there to say? <laughs> JVC in the chat room is still real to me, damn it! <laughs> and, uh, boy, if there was ever an episode that Rabbit Badger should have tuned into, oh, this, this would have been Oh, good God. It. I'll tell you what. Somewhere there's a man in upstate New York having bad dreams, and this is why, because <laughs> he's missing this episode. Uh, all right, so, so here's... Uh, if. We can offer a state of the book. Where is the state of the book? I would say we're at 25%. There's a lot of good ideas. There, there's a lot of effort being put into it. Uh, a bunch, we got what, how many chapters are there now? There's like 37, eight, eight. not that many are done. So look, point is, we gotta have like 30 chapters. Everyone get in there, write a page. Of, of your hottest, sexiest action, and then and, and, uh, we'll and, make a business. And by the way, I was thinking about this, right? Like, if we go over 30 good chapters, that's fine. Yes. Because sequel, baby. Yeah. <laughs> like, all these erotic stories have sequels. It's always like, it's like, you got the, like you got Ellie May it? goes to France, and then like she bangs everybody in France, and it's like Ellie May stuffs her chunnel on the way to London. <laughs> it's uh, first it's the Diamond Club, then she goes to the Onyx Club, which I'll just let you decide who she bangs there, and then uh, the, Sap the Sapphire, the Sapphire Club. Oh, on, those uh, are on, black like, guys. Av Avatar Planet. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, they all gotta be references, right? After we just yelled at them for making references, <laughs> like, no, all the titles have to be references. It's gotta no. be the second one's gonna be creepy Santa returns. <laughs> <laughs> no, that won't sell. All I care about is what's gonna sell because okay, so that's and that actually brings us to the other thing, right? So we we the need the money, purpose. Brian. The money. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. Carl in the chat room wants us to see if we can get Leo to read the audiobook. <laughs> Which brings us... That's a perfect segue. That's a okay. perfect segue. Because I got it thinking. Uh, is that yes. like... We asked everybody in chat room to write this book, and it's going to be a great book. It's going to be awesome. Because, like, no matter what, like, like, us pointing out, like, the all the references and everything, it's like, at the worst... Let's say we, we try to scrub the references as best we can, and at some point there's like three to s seven references of Creepy Santa still left <laughs> when it goes live. And like at the end of the day, it's just going to mean that the book is crappily written, which is kind of half the point, that it'll be crappily yes. written, you know? Yes. But well, And keep in mind, the, 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 real, the real goal here is not to have this thing be universally loved. The goal is to trick just one person horny, lonely housewife into wasting 99 cents on her shenanigan. Well, one let's, person. Let's, let's drill that down more. 
We don't want her to buy it. We want her to find Inspirato and be find herself taking a long bath to... You're, you're, <laughs> you're saying if we could... Oh, see, I didn't even think about that. To me, this was all big one trick. And if we could trick somebody into buying it, then we win. But for you, she should buy it and, and love... Or at oh, least oh no! Oh no, Brian! I, I'm I'm the a hole in the teen movie. Like I, it's not enough that I trick somebody; they have to love it for my own personal pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm the guy who makes the bet with the main character, and she's all that. Like I, I'm I'm that guy. I'm like like no, you have to take the nerd girl out to the prom and make her love you, and then only will you get my twenty dollars. <laughs> All right, no, I didn't even consider taking it to that level. Boy, you are an ass. <laughs> but no, I mean, really, I want to deliver some good uh, fapping material to the housewives of America and all <laughs> ships at sea. Now, hold on. Now, technically, fapping is what dudes do. I believe flapping is what chicks do. <laughs> is that a thing? Did I... <laughs> it sure puts a whole new context into flapper, doesn't it? Who knows? Maybe that maybe that was it from the beginning. I don't know. It's flapping. <laughs> flap, 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 okay. flap. I'm just gonna let you know if you're sleeping next to your sister's room and you're here. You know what's going on. They so, call her flapper, <laughs> flapper, faster <laughs> than lightning. Wow, I didn't expect that to go there. I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we're glad you were able to join us on the last episode of NHFW Show. <laughs> oh, Justin, stop saying that. You know we're not canceled, even though... All the shows are going dark for a week. I'm sure we'll be back afterwards. This is not some kind of veiled insinuation that this is the end of the show. Which, by the way, don't forget that Jury Friday is on every Friday, and I'm <laughs> sure some version of the BB Live show will live forever. Uh, all right. So I got to think, and what if... Because we know authors, like real authors, like people who have had published books. Sure. I'm not saying that anybody, because it's all anonymous, so I'm not saying that these people would be part of it, but if we were to reach out to authors to ask them whether or not they would like to do it. And keep in mind also, this is not an outrageous thought. This is not something else. Even people who haven't appeared on the show, if we went to them and say, hey, we plan to rub the crappiness of their own books in their faces, by writing a genuinely bad erotic fiction book, making it look like a Fifty Shades of Grey book, and put and, and cheating our way to getting it in the top 10 and seeing how long it stays there, would you like to anonymously, completely anonymously, donate some material to help us make that happen? I uh, gotta and, and, and our only rule is that it, you can only submit your first draft without backspacing. Yes, yes, there's no, there's no, Wow, somebody said Patrick Rothfuss, who's the creator of my new favorite series, The Name of the Wind. Wow, that would what be What about amazing. George R.R. R. Martin? They, uh, Tom oh. and Veronica just interviewed him. Uh, I think they're basically best friends. We can probably figure that out. <laughs> uh, LeVar Burton, we definitely snuck him a beer that he was afraid might be an energy drink, but was relieved when he found out it was natural light. Uh, we, but uh, don't take my word for it. Flap it yourself. You know what? Maybe we should hit up. Uh, next week, aren't we going to have a best-selling author, Ernie Klein, on the show? Maybe we should maybe we should drizzle that. His way. It, it would be great if in the middle of the book, everything is, is this, you know, sassy erotic fiction. But then all of a sudden, there's just references to Galaga and Defender <laughs> and, and Donkey Which Kong. Which one? <laughs> Which one was Ernie Klein's? <laughs> Who knew? Brianna Young put on the deep cut edition of her Rush best greatest hits. <laughs> and then he, once she finally came, she flew off in her flying DeLorean and she traveled <laughs> back in time and busted ghosts while listening to Talking Heads. 
<laughs> Which one was Ernie's? <laughs> I feel like I'll tell you what, if we actually get people, like we should have Andrew Maine like write a, a chapter and then like I'll write a chapter that's not Andrew Maine, that's all about like uh uh, panic gas and like people turning into <laughs> zombies or uh, somebody who lives like a chronological man like and I'll write a chapter that uses like uh, that's like a a, a a 50 cent copy of of a of a Dennis Miller monologue <laughs> and then and wear a beard because that's you <laughs> you smart like this. I like that you did you did a really 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 good analogy joke and then you're like I don't have enough faith in this. I'm just going to tag it. It's you. You're the guy. <laughs> I was like, I don't think anyone's getting where I'm heading here. That's, that's fine. <laughs> just kidding. So who else? Who, I mean, like, it doesn't have to be even writers. Like, I mean, I think maybe the, the man who's what if we seat got, I'm like, looking at right now, what if, what if Tomas Marid? Can we go to Tomas Marid? Could we go to Veronica Belmont, maybe? Dude, do you know who it, yeah, no, you know who would do it is Ayaz. Well, because he's a sassy dude. You think he's I, creepy Santa I, once in his life? I think I think he would. It would be. Uh, people are saying Scott Sigler, of course. That's a that's a natural. People are saying John C. Dvorak, but but it's like I feel like he'd be like he grabbed her breast, much like I mentioned in my June eighth column in two thousand and three. Why MySpace is doomed? <laughs> he grabbed her breast. <laughs> A totally overrated organ that is only propagated by the complete <laughs> fanboyism are, of press around the world. People are saying uh, Phil Plate, not like a picture is like he grabbed her breasts. They were enormous, like Jupiter's and themselves. <laughs> Giant gas giants gas filled giants. with uh, swirling gases <laughs> inside. I feel like your your Phil Plate just got very gas centric. Like he just keeps going <laughs> back like, to gas things. That's that's me. That's like that's like when you get to the edge and you need to uh, you need to create like a bleed because something's gonna get cut off. You're expecting somebody else to jump in, so it's like you just keep chattering, <laughs> expecting to be cut off. But then instead, that bleed just keeps on going, and I'm like, I'm just gonna keep saying gas, gas giants, and then gas rangers had gases in their gas holes <laughs> all right what else do we what, what about we teller to are we gonna are we are you gonna ask teller hey teller why don't you write in our crazy erotic fiction book sure why not do what are right here all i'm saying is that i'm willing to email everyone we've mentioned that whose email i have for this i think it's a very funny idea and i don't care if they say no I guess that's the biggest thing. Is that like, okay, re real quick, uh, there is one more suggestion of Ryan Connolly, <laughs> and <laughs> and all I can picture the Ryan Connolly uh, chapter is being like, what the frick? It's like she was grabbing her lady parts and <laughs> I mean, it's like darn it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That would not be what happens. Ryan Connolly would just bleep everything and make you believe he's using the words, but yes, really, and it he would be even worse. It would just be, it would just be like, oh, like it, the, the, you would just read it, and there would just be like black markings over things. So you're like, oh, she f black marked his d black mark, and then like if you're having to, like able to see the actual first draft, it'd be like, she flicked his diameter, like, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know that that's much better. Diameter is probably not the best one. But that, have we have we revealed that? Have we have we blown the lid off the film? Oh riot no! Cursing? If, okay, if you're a fan of film riot, I'll I'll blow the lid off this. If you're a fan of film, film riot, riot you know exposed. <laughs> uh, it's uh, what you'll notice that they're, they're sometimes bleeped out cursing on the show. Even when they bleep out the cursing, they're not actually cursing. They'll no. say an innocuous word that starts with F, like what the frick? But they'll bleep it so it sounds like the F the word. Other word. Yeah, yeah. Or they'll be like like oh like. You're such a beep, beep. But if you're like, you're such a beast. Yeah, you're such a beast. So it's like, like what you don't hear is the USA over, overdub of the usual suspects. Like, that's what's really being said. They sound like a cable movie that's being overdubbed, you know, <laughs> to avoid the curse words. And then they like, dirty it up with the beeps. 
Did, uh, by the way, what is the best example of that that you've ever seen? Because for me, it's the big Lebowski where they say, um, instead of this is what happens when you F a stranger in the A, he says, this is what happens, Larry. This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. And then, <laughs> and then he hits the car. And then it's like, uh, the other great one was like, hey man, you want a drink? And he's like, does the Pope S in the woods? But what he changes to on TBS is, uh, uh, hey, you want a drink? He's like, John Fogarty would. <laughs> now my favorite is the usual suspects. It's uh, when they're in the lineup, and they keep handing him the card. And in, in, in the movie, it's give me the keys, you effing C esser. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so yep. they each read it. And uh, I believe it's Daniel Baldwin. So they each read. And then, sorry, in the movie, it's, uh, or sorry, in the USA version, it's give me the keys, you fairy godmother. <laughs> and so everybody, and like they all read it. Like, it's all six of them, and they all read it in their own different way. And, like, some of them are ashamed, so it's like, give me the keys, you fairy godmother. And then some of them are like, you know, Benito del Toro has, like, his crazy voice or whatever. He's like, give me the keys, you fairy godmother. And then Daniel Baldwin has uh, the best one, which is, because in the movie, it's, give me the keys, you Evan C. Sucker, mother ever. So right, right. He movie, goes over the top. He's totally selling it, right? Yeah, he's like he's trying to screw with the cops. So he's like, yeah, like sticking the gun in his face or whatever. Uh, so in the movie, in, in the USA version, it's, give me the keys, you fairy godmother, mother lover. Ah. <laughs> so it's like he's, he's trying to go over the top with even more cartoonishly PG uh, expletives. Exactly. So he just keeps, he just goes full Mormon. And it's just like, you know, like he's like at a church lock-in. And he's being the badass. Yes. Uh, what were we talking about again? <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, somebody. Everyone keeps saying "Yippee Kaye, Mr. Falcon." Is that is that what it was? Oh, that's great. Uh, okay. Do you want to read some of the Diamond Club? You want to see some of the gold we got so far? Uh, yes. Okay. So that's how we'll end the show. Uh, by the way, will we ask Dr. Kiki? Absolutely. Absolutely, we will ask Dr. Kiki. In fact. Let's get a wish list going on a doc and then send that doc to me and Brian so we remember who we talked about. Because I will, I know, Brian, can I get, can I get a pinky swear that you will send an email to anybody whose email you have that's on that doc? No, because people are going to put Teller on that doc and then I will be obligated right, to email. excluding I, Teller. Yeah, yeah. Although if people on Twitter want to swarm Teller, no, say, no. Ask Please don't. Brian about the book project. Please don't. Please don't. This is uncomfortable for me. Listen, Brian, uh, your fans have already gone outside your boundary by accosting Teller. Yeah, and uh, he it knows made me the Diamond Club. He is basically a part of the Diamond Club because he made the symbol. Okay, Chad, cut over to the to the chapter. Cut over to the book and and scroll on down. So the very first chapter called Try Before You Buy. That's B-I. <laughs> buy, and it gives the name, but uh, but it uh, it says it'll be by anonymous. Uh, always open to changes, especially to tie it in with previous chapters and the rest of the story, particularly in the beginning of this chapter. Her phone could break for a more realistic reason in the chapter before this. Also, are name changes necessary? My life was certainly about to get more interesting, though I did not think so at the time. I finally had some time to myself, but was thinking about our company. I wondered if I should call Roman. He was probably on his break. I took out my iPhone, was about to, when the unthinkable happened, the screen froze. Because <laughs> that is unthinkable. <laughs> With an iPhone, the, the screen was froze. <laughs> A recent update screwed up my phone, jeez. Usually I know better than to update right away, but I felt spontaneous, something I've not felt in quite a time. Now that's good. I was different woman before I met Roman. There was not much to do at my home, so I drove to the nearest Apple store. I needed a genius to fix my phone. Are you reading ahead on this so I can know whether or not I'm about to get, on tro uh, get in trouble, Justin? Uh, no, I couldn't find that chapter. It's, it's the very first one. Oh, is it? Uh, okay. Uh, Patrick is giving me the jump ahead thing. What are you telling me to do? Oh, you're saying keep going. He's saying it's safe. 
Hello, my name is Madison, and welcome to... Oh, hey, I think I saw you last night? Asked the genius, eyeing me up and down. Excuse me, I asked. At the Diamond Club. I'm a regular there. This is the first time I saw you. Did you enjoy yourself? I'd rather not speak about that. I just want my phone fixed. You see, I can already guess why you're here. Every new update, hundreds of people storm in here and expect us to fix it. I can fix it in a jiffy. Madison lifted my phone and began her work. Her slender fingers swiped and tapped with such speed and force. This is pretty good. Her tenacity was impressive and made me quiver a bit. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this was a woman with exceptional hands. I was so gonna precise. say, I'm at 20% just listening to this. <laughs> she caught me staring at her hands and smirked. Finished, she said to me after less than a minute of handling my phone. Wow, that was marvelous. Did, how did you do that so quickly? Repetition's the key, she answered. <laughs> I see. Thank you for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. Is there anything else I could do for you while you're here? An idea <laughs> was Ed in response to her query. A dirty idea. Normally, such thoughts were dismissible, but this woman was a part of the Diamond Club. What followed was inevitable. You have great fingers for smartphones. What else can you do with them? Oh, you're Monica. such a slut, Brianna. Hold on. Her name just changed from Madison to Monica. <laughs> <laughs> and I, Leave it. Just, Leave it. That, that has to stay in there. That has to stay in there. <laughs> Monica smiled and responded, Oh, many things, but I go on I go on break so I can show you my prowess. Meet me in the alley behind the store and you can see firsthand what I can do. <laughs> I nodded and hastened to our meeting place. I was caught up in the moment and did not question my actions. I did not think about Roman. And that is where we will leave this chapter, um, where it goes on to awesome saucy action. All right, uh, Justin, all right. you got one. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to read one sentence. With no context in this chapter. Eventually, her hand ventured down my skirt and started rubbing me like a genie's lamp. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, jump down, jump down, find another chapter. Uh, all right, here we go. This one is called uh, People in, in the Chat Room. Uh, give me give me a good chapter, or else I'm just going to read the next one. Let me see if I can find a good... Uh... Oh, wait, we have a suggestion from Patrick. What's your... What's your su nerdiest and dirtiest is, is the chapter. Nerdiest and dirtiest. Okay, here we go. Uh, he's naming his own. Okay, I'll read. I'll read. <laughs> <D -dollars. laughs> Busted. Okay. He says so. By the time Friday came around, I was dead tired and needed to get the busy week out of my head. Luckily for me, there was a fan convention in town at the Moscone Center. It focused on popular science fiction, fantasy, and cartoon TV shows and movies. Although I had managed to catch a few from time to time, there was really just one thing that interested me. The virgins. As a large convention, it attracted a lot of press and media from out of town. There were plane loads of actors coming in from L.A. to promote their shows, most of which would be replaced by mid-season. Some of, by the way, I love that this is like the, <laughs> the veteran of people who have been to these conventions a million times. Yes. Oh, my God. Some you of the promotions were special events hosted by local venues. This year, the Diamond Club had been asked to host a promotional party for a new film called Zombie President. <laughs> the movie studio brought in a crew early that morning. By the time I got over there, the Diamond Club had temporarily been transformed into a collection of zombie apoc apocalypse venues from the movie. At the front door, hired actors were made up like soldiers asking to see people's invitations. Luckily, since I was part of the Diamond Club elite, I had no problem getting inside. I went inside to find all the employees dressed up like zombies. That is, all except for Diamande, who was apparently, who apparently wanted no part of the fantasy and was happy to just collect the huge fee from the movie studio. I guess Diamande is the owner of the Diamond Club. I see. The club floor was littered with nerds who had clearly never been inside anything like the Diamond Club before. 
Many of them had obviously come straight from the convention and still wore costumes of various superheroes, anime characters, or uniforms from a variety of science fiction shows. I wandered over to the bar, hopped on a stool, and began to scan the room for my first target. Which I like scanning for target as a metaphor for this. I considered approaching Captain Kirk, or maybe a hot vampire, until I caught a glimpse of somebody in a tight blue superhero outfit on the stage. The outfit was skin-tight, latex rubber, and accentuated his well-built chest that looked like it could be chiseled by Rodan himself. His pants were the same material and tight enough to make the bulge in his crotch very obvious. (laughs) By the time I'm done with him, I thought, I'll make sure those pants won't fit his man bulge anymore. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right, all right. That's that's the moment. Uh, Let me give a quick example of uh, what not to write. I'm going to jump down here, and I'm going to go, I'm going to join us in uh, the second paragraph in by something titled A Cold Day in Austin. This is what we don't want. All caps. Justin lays down and looks at the (laughs) gleaming poster of Brian hung beside his bed. It is a picture of Brian, his hair spiked with skin-tight jeans on. Why don't you want to touch me? The poster seems to cry out to Justin. Justin begins to wonder what is really underneath those jeans as he looks as Brian's. All right. I can't read anything beyond that. Wow. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. I think I found there was a Steve McTillan tutor chapter. Yes. (laughs) The basement. (laughs) I'll just read the first couple chapters, or sorry, paragraphs. I walked up the steps before knocking on the door. I looked around thinking to myself, this isn't the type of house you would expect a wealthy man in his mid-30s to live in. (laughs) The man I was visiting was Steve M. McTillitutor, an investor who made all of his money by capitalizing on a cultural phenomenon known as laser discs. Okay, all right, that's enough. He had created a site where you could buy, sell, and discuss these priceless collections of discs and eventually sold the site for several million. He was a stingy investor with an eye for a deal. It was going to be a challenge that made me wet with excitement. All right. Oh, my God, hold on, wait, wait, wait. real quick. Look, jump down to Brianna's Night In. Look at how that one began. There's some saucy stuff in here that gives me uh, heart. H-E-A-R-T. That uh, that this is going to to work out. There's some good saucy sauciness in there. All right, if you guys want to join in, go to bitly slash the Diamond Club book, and you can read all the the sauciness and join in with the sauciness and uh, and help make this thing a reality. So there's that. Uh, Justin, uh, what else? Do we have anything else before we wrap up? Uh, I mean, let me let me just say this. The we have a lot of dumb ideas on this show. This is not one of the <laughs> dumb ideas. This is a great idea. I love this idea. The more I talk about it with people, the more I like it. It is awesome. The idea, I think, and like it's legit that we could totally get this easily on the top 10 for once. Oh, and easily on CNN. The two of us could be on C- This is, here's the real follow-up. You, you, uh, we're going to pull back the curtain a bit. It doesn't matter if this thing really stays in the top 10. What matters is that it exists long enough for us to get a backlash. And then Justin and I get to go on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. We get to be the merry pranksters behind this. And you guys get to see us on uh, on real television. Okay, and number that- one, number one, uh, if we're on CNN or any kind of, uh, if we're on any national news, I will make this promise. I'm going to wear a chain with an iPad on it, and the iPad will just be tweets, live tweets, from the (laughs) Diamond Club. You know what? I'm gonna dress as a robot with an iPad embedded in my my chest plate, and I will answer all like, I must consult my programming, and I'll answer everything based on what's written on my iPad right here. Because here's all we owe, is that if we actually get any attention on it, then this is not for our careers. We make no benefit. Like, if we are on there, we will just troll the national media and just be like, listen, this is a joke, you're a joke, and 
I'm going to creepy Santa while you guys do the news. And we'll make sure to drop, that's when all the references will come in. We'll be like, well, whatever the question is, I'll be like, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to my friend, uh, Steve McTillitude, he does a show called This Week in Laserdisc, <laughs> and he was the one that brought up that if you really want max troll uh, but uh, capability, then you gotta you gotta take it all away. My friend Ira Sockman says this all the time. Exactly. This is that, and it's legal anywhere but Cuba. Uh, by yes. the way, Robert exactly. underscore says, "Yo, you need to troll Bernard Shaw hard." <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, we're, the results are in in our Black Guy tournament. Uh, Bernard Shaw has advanced over Rick James, and will now what? meet either Barack Obama or Shaq. What, what about Bill Cosby? He's in the other division. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. He's, uh... Yeah, man. He's gonna face Bobby McFerrin in the other division. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and uh, what about um, uh, the guy from Police Academy who makes the sound effects? Uh, he's not in it. He's actually oh. Asian. He's Asian? Yeah. yeah. Who, knew? who knew, sir? So uh, I guess that's it for this episode of NSFW. You got anything to promote, Justin, before we wrap things up? Um, I mean, not really. I guess if you run a company and you want to book a go game, then call the go game and say you want Justin and Young to do it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I figure, like, if one of those happens in my first year, then they'll be like, wow, Justin Young. Oh, actually, I do want to thank... Um, I want to. Did thank you just clap like a happy schoolgirl? I did. You just totally clapped like an eight-year-old, like oh, 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 oh. No, 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 because I felt I felt so terrible about not remembering this. Uh, so, Govna on Twitter, G O V N E H, uh, she actually brought me a pie while I was out doing a go game like two weeks ago, and I was so wow. happy and I was so delighted. And her pie was amazing. It was a great pie. <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is another chapter in the book, isn't it? That's the heading on it, right? Uh, no, this is not a euphemism, Brian. Like she brought me an apple pie and I ate all of it with my face. And it was amazing. <laughs> okay, all right. Look, that's gotta be it for this episode of NSFW. Uh don't forget Scam School Book One and Two still available. I love you guys. Starting this Tuesday, we're back to normal. Everything's been crazy for the last few episodes. We're going to be serious from now on and have normal, good shows the way we always do. Next Unlike week, all uh, show. who's on? EC, baby. Ernie Klein. Bro. Ernie Klein. All right, look, that's it for this episode of NSFW. I love you guys. Do me a favor. Die in a fire. See you Welcome next Tuesday. To Minute for the week of June 25th, 2012. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Here comes week 14. Sterling remains in sixth place with $28.7 million. Just Rob Young's in fifth place with Brave bringing in $6.7 million, bringing his total to $150.3 million. Veronica Bellant's in fourth place with $166.8 million. Watch your ass, Belmont. Brian Brush is kicking in in third place with Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. World, bringing in $3.8 million, bringing his three point eight $536.4 million. Scott John remains in second place with $611.8 million. And in first place with $614.1 million, it's Tom Merritt. And that is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of June 25th, 2012. Let me just say, I won that steak. You owe you me did. a steak. I'm going to get you a steak. That's fine. What y'all know about steak bets? It's time to Dude, by the way, so if I actually had a reasonable, the rest of the like, time constraint on that bet, you so, I so would have won. I'm been such an idiot. A month. Reasonable would have been one month. It's been, it's been a month. Not from, no, I mean, it would have been openings of those four. That's would have been a reasonable bet, and I would have won. But wait, wait. That'd be crazy. Opening weekends? That would have been stupid. That's crazy talk. I would have went down to 250 and I would have won on openings. Then you spend the same well, but we weren't talking about openings. And may, may I remind you, your original bet was for 300 million. Well, might I remind you, I'm really dumb. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next Tuesday. Bye. Night of fire. Oh, NSA. W. I love you. Oh.
Oh, Get Set Go's gonna come on. They talked to me. Get Set Go's coming back. Yeah. So is, uh, so is the Possum Posse. Yes! Oh, yeah. All, all, all the mad hits are here. Hey, that was a great show, Brian. By the way, I want to remind everybody that I have two jobs now. The first is reclaiming the good name of Big Bad Salts. The second is making sure that you keep all intrusions out of your anus. Hi, I'm Ira Sockman. I want to bring you all the knowledge you need to know about Ira Sockman's manhole covers, style anal plating. We've all woken up to find a Boba Fett in our Sarlacc pit in the morning. No more. Plate your anus and make sure that you don't have any unwanted <laughs> loose detritus <laughs> or swinging debris in your holiest of holies. Iris Hockman's manhole covers anal plating. So comfortable, you'll pretend it's not there. Wink. God damn it. You realize, like, that was so perfect that I couldn't interject to point out that fully half those jokes I made up in our call before. <laughs> before <laughs> even God damn it. I love, I love, this, this, is the, this is the true side. And you didn't even say, you didn't even say loose detritus right. You said loose detritus. It's not me. Ira has his own way of speaking. Uh, <laughs>